This episode of On the Record is brought to you by Associated Equipment Distributors. I'm Executive Editor Kim Schmidt. Welcome to On the Record. Here's an update on what's currently impacting the ag equipment industry. On November 7th, the Federal Reserve cut its key interest rate by a quarter point in response to the steady decline in inflation. This cut followed a half-point reduction in September. The Fed's benchmark rate is now about 4.6%, down from a decade high of 5.3% before the September meeting. High inventories on dealers' lots have come with high interest payments. Following the September cut, George Russell, a founding member of the Machinery Advisors Consortium, said that a typical $30 million floor plan debt would see a $150,000 benefit. This latest cut would add another $75,000 for a total of $225,000. The point is, he said, that is not much in a dealer with $30 million of floor plan debt. Ahead of this latest cut, Kyle McMahon, founder and CEO of TractorZoom, had laid out the following annual interest rate savings for equipment dealers at the previous 50 basis points cut and the 200 basis point cut, that is expected in the next year. Dealers with 10 plus stores currently have $4 million in average inventory per location, will save $20,000 at 50 basis points and $81,000 at 200 basis points. Dealers with one to nine stores currently have $2.8 million in average inventory per location, will save $14,000 at 50 basis points and $57,000 at 200 basis points. A dealership with 20 locations has $80 million of inventory and will save $1.62 million in interest starting next fall, he said. We could still see another cut this year. Speaking at a news conference, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that in the near term, the election will have no effect on our interest rate decisions. In other financial news, on November 7th, all the ag machinery companies Baird Analyst McDobre Fellows were rated outperform. That includes ACO, Alamo Group, CNH Industrial, and Deere. This week's dealers on the move include Sun South and Ag Revolution. John Deere dealer Sun South opened a new dealership in Columbus, Georgia. The dealership has 21 locations across Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia. Echo dealer Ag Revolution opened its fourth and fifth locations in Urbana and Circleville, Ohio in the last month. Now here's Noah Newman with the latest from the Technology Corner. Thank you very much, Kim. So a few weeks back at the World Dairy Expo in Madison, Wisconsin, there was a lot of precision technology on display. Farm Equipment Editor Mike Lesser caught up with John Isaacson of Monarch Tractor and asked him for his top five applications in autonomy. Coming in at three through five in his power rankings are vineyards, specialty crops, and orchards. What about one and two? Number one as of today is definitely the dairy industry. Um, the dairy industry has kind of taken us off guard, um, but is about 5x larger than we were told it was going to be. Um, and it's a very promising industry. Part of that drive is because it's a 24-7 business. If you're using something 24-7, it's very easy to send out that ROI. If you're having energy efficiency, if you're having energy savings, if you're saving on labor, that's all very easy to calculate out. And dairy is a like almost a perfect scenario for autonomy because it's pretty controlled environments. Number two, I would say, as we look to it, uh, we call it sod, but I would say open area mowing in Southern states. If you get down to parts of Florida, you're talking about 11 months of mowing grass. So you get into these sod farms, they're mowing grass 11 months out of the year. You get to Southeast Texas, they're mowing grass 10 to 11 months out of the year. And you can catch John's full interview on precisionfarmingdealer.com. That'll do it for this week's Technology Corner. I'm Noah Newman. Back to you, Kim. Thanks, Noah. Continuing with the autonomy theme, the topic came up during a technology panel at the Farm Equipment Manufacturers Association Fall Convention in Dallas. Colin Hurd, founder of Smart Ag, the first retrofit driverless tractor automation system, says we're a ways away from what he calls set it and forget autonomy. He ventures we're five plus years out for a lot of autonomous applications. I think we're a lot closer to uh, one person being able to run uh, four or five machines at the same time, or uh, you know, the combine operator managing the grain cart. I think 
you'll create really meaningful value very quickly and not have all of the liability concerns that sometimes surround autonomy. So that's what I think is near term. I think you'll see a lot of that coordinated fleets, multi-machine, uh, in, in field coordination uh, with people on site still. Chris Hunsaker from Acutus Ag agrees and predicts we'll see a mixture of things happen. Personally, coming from the implement space um, in the past, I look at the autonomy as, uh, you know, depending on what your implement is and how complicated it is, it, it might be really difficult to fully automate everything that happens on that machine. But you can, you can look for high value add automation that you can introduce um, that, that makes it easier for the operator or gets you a better outcome. And so, you know, you've got, if you're capturing the data from your machine and it's used, that can inform and de-risk some of the creation of that automation for you. Uh, and then, you know, yeah, the, the future of a, a mixed fleet where you have, you know, depending on what your farm is and, and what you're doing, you may have certain things that are fairly autonomous and you have other things that aren't. Um, there's got to be some kind of a management layer on top of that that uh, allows that stuff to coexist in the same space. Dan Rockholds of Farmata looks at autonomy as evolution instead of revolution. He says we'll see autonomy come in a step-by-step -step progression rather than a big rapid change. Before you know it, he says, everything's running by itself, robotically or autonomously. ACO reported its third quarter results on November 4th. Third quarter net sales dropped 24.8% to $2.6 billion. Meanwhile, net sales for the first nine months of the year came in at $8.8 billion, down 17.3% year over year. Regionally, South America sales took the biggest hit in the first nine months at down 42% followed by North America at 20.4%. Europe Middle East sales dropped 18.2% for the period, and Asia Pacific Africa sales were down 11.7%. JP Morgan analyst Tammy Zakaria noted that management said the third quarter represented the largest year-over-year -year production cuts the company had taken in over a decade by at least 35%. Echo cut production guidance and sees underproduction likely through at least the first half of 2025 she said, writing, in efforts to manage inventory levels, ACO cut global production by 35% in the third quarter, which was 19% more than it anticipated. Notably, in South America, the company cut production levels by greater than 50% year-over-year in the quarter. Looking ahead, additional cuts are expected in the fourth quarter and first half of 2025, as full-year production is now guided down about 25% versus prior down 20-25%. to 25%. This week's data point is brought to you by Ag Equipment Intelligence's Executive Briefing. According to the 2024 Dealer Business Outlook and Trends Report, 49.4% of dealers are forecasting their surface revenue will increase at least 2% in 2024 versus 2023. Just under 17% are forecasting service revenues to be down this year. The full Dealer Business Outlook and Trends Report will be released later this month. As always, we welcome your feedback. You can send comments and story suggestions to kschmidt at lessermedia.com. Until next time, I'm Kim Schmidt. Thanks for joining us.